uh, can we use, or how can we use the GEMIC index in our patients? Does it give clinical information? And especially, especially we were interested, if you do open treatment for FII, does it change, and how does it change? So the, the GEMRIC, as we have heard already before, it's a validated indica indicator for arthritic changes, for cartilage damage. So the question was if there's a potential to improve information about our patients undergoing FIA surgery. So far, we do not have information on follow-up the GEMRIC studies in open treated patients or in surgically treated patients. There is no follow-up study with a comparison to a control group at this point, and it's unclear if the index or if there's a cutoff index um, for good or bad prognosis in these patients. Uh, that's a background normal cartilage here. As the proteoglycans break down, the gadolinium goes into the cartilage and alters the color of the cartilage or the imaging. And uh, we have tried, sorry, I have to stay over here. We have tried to map this over here and to compare our T1 index or our degeneric findings with the intraoperative finding. 29 year old woman, mixed FIA, and you see uh, lesion, subcontrol lesion, and label separation anterior superior. And if you do this imaging with degeneric, you see here the lesion is depicted by this MRI technique. Actually, blue is very good cartilage it's up here. Uh, red would be bad cartilage, and you see this uh, yellow is somewhat in, in between. That means lower than all the bluish or greenish colored areas. So it really depicts the area of the lesion on a f as a tabular side, but also on the femoral side. You see this is the area with the cam deformity with visible altered cartilage, and it's all red in the anterior portion of the femoral head. So we would like to have or we're interested to see how does this translate in patients. Our aims were changes in the T1 index over time in patients undergoing the surgery, and if there's any correlation uh, in these changes with short-term outcome, that means one-year follow-up in these patients. It's actually a study granted by the Swiss National Foundation. It's an ongoing study, non-randomized, prospective comparing, study two groups of patients, one operative group, the patients undergoing surgical treatment for FIA, and the other one non-operative, either because we thought they are not eligible for this surgery anymore, mostly because they have some advanced cartilage damage, or we recommended surgery and they didn't want to undergo the surgery. This is inclusion criteria. That uh, some of the younger patients with an age limit 50 years and uh, of course no previous surgeries or other complex deformities. This was the algorithm again. We collected uh, 61 HIPs, 49 met the inclusion criteria. We needed informed or still need of course informed consent. Two groups, operative group 18, non-operative 19 with a one-year follow-up so far at this time point but this is an ongoing study. We're still collecting uh, we continuously collect new patients. These are the data. It's important if you do the IV contrast, the patient have to walk um, for a certain time and have to rest in order to get reliable, reproducible um, T1 values. The T1 maps over here, technical data, and very important, we did the localization in clockwise positions and uh, have a, just to, to have it on a clockwise position on a femoral as well as on the acetabular side. So our axis, our center of rotation was the femoral neck center. Actually, all the planes were perpendicular to the center axis through the femoral head and the necks and the neck. You can see this is the mapping over here. We have the clockwise system. 12 o'clock is uh, cranial on the head as well as the acetabulum and so on. And we separated actually these slices in a central compartment, a central slice, and peripheral slice. So we had 24 acetabular measurements and 24 measurements on the femoral head. In the subgroup, we tested this, and the interclass correlation was quite good for both mean, but even better for, I mean, intra-observer, but even better for 
inter-observer correlation, and we did this mapping in this way as we have shown before with a, a MATLAB software. So you have at one, gl at one glance you can see where are the areas with good and bad cartilage on the head and also on the acetabulum. This is an example, initial MRI scan, you see here the peripheral compartment and central, it's divided in half, that's the cartilage and we measured the acetabular side in this slice and here that's the femoral cartilage again, uh, lateral and medial, so are two measurement points on one slice at the one year follow up. Demographics, actually there are two uh, differences, the non-operative group was uh, significantly older than our uh, patient group which, we, which underwent open surgical treatment. They were similar in terms of the tennis grade, osteoarthritis grade. They were significant more females in the patients not undergoing surgery, but otherwise uh, all the other parameters are comparable. We also used WOMAC at whose score it was the initial score, they were similar, we used it just to get their clinical follow-up and surprisingly you could also see that the T1 indexes in both groups were very similar, 400, uh, more than 500 for the acetabulum and 400, around 460 for the femoral head. So pretty much comparable. This is the initial solar distribution and you can see, you can compare the two groups that are all measurements points summarized in these uh, two slides from the acetabulum, so they look very much the same. The best cartilage posterior superior, it's the non-operative group, and on the right side, operative group, and if you look at the femoral head, it looks very similar to that's uh, posterior superior again with the best, the most bluish cartilage in this group. So primary outcome measurements was the WOMAX score and also as a secondary outcome measure, the WHO's score. This is a statistical analysis. And this is actually the change of the T1 index score over time in a non-operative group. And you can see there's a little decline. This is initial and acetabulum follow-up. There's a little decline, significant if you take all measurement points together. But in total, you can see there's not much of a change to be seen, this is over one year. Surprisingly, it looked very different in a surgical treated group. They were, there was a significant drop in the T1 images. That means the cartilage seems, oh, has, has less favorable values, seems in a, in a worse state than before. This is true for the acetabulum. These are the mean and median values, values with the drop down here, but also on a femoral side. So this is at the one year follow up. Sonal differences in the non-operative group, if you see in the acetabulum summarized before and at the follow-up one year later in the femoral head, they look pretty much the same. So there was no specific zone getting worse. So they all slightly uh, became worse, but it was not a localized phenomena. If you look at the operative group, you see the differences here. Also here you had now, very different pictures, so the blue disappeared also here. This is uh, uh, up, um, uh, at, uh, before time of uh, surgery, one year follow up acetabulum, before, uh, time of surgery, and one year follow up here. And uh, in a lot of zones, 14 zones or regions in the acetabulum, it dropped significantly. In nine regions also, uh, after femoral head, it was a significant drop at the one year. What is here, if you look at the clinical score, the WOMAX score is better if it drops over time and you have the non-operative group, there was no significant change in outcome, so they had more or less the, the same finding, but there was a significant improvement in the operative group. You see the mean average drop down here, and this is uh, uh, the, the, med the, sorry, the median and the mean drop uh, before surgery and at one year follow-up. So they did better, but the cartilage looked worse at least on a T1 index. If we, try, we tried also to correlate outcome in a non-operative group with the initial value of the T1 index, the higher the better in terms of the index, but there was no correlation with clinical 
function at one year follow-up in this group. However, we found a clear correlation in a surgically treated group. The higher the T1 index was at the beginning, that means the better the cartilage was, the better the patient did at one year follow-up. So there, of course, there are some limitations, small groups so far of patients in each cohort. Uh, HIPs were not randomized, so it was uh, either surgeon's decision not to proceed with surgery anymore, or the patients uh, refused to do the surgery. Almost uh, a uniform T1 index decrease after joint preserving surgery, as you have seen. Um, they were somewhat surprising. If you look at another study from uh, Boston, they have found the same uh, the, the same result after PAO, the one-year index were lower than the preoperative one, but after two years they changed, so they improved. So there was the question or there is a discussion, are there altered biomechanics which change the T1 index, is there catabolic reactions or inflammation going on? So the, our conclusion is we go on. We started now the three-year follow-up elevation. We collect more patients, but we also will follow them for three years and maybe or even uh, for five years. The pre-op T1 index is significant, significantly correlated with a better outcome, but uh, in a surgically treated group. We do not have a measurement or a cut-off value so far. There is only one study out, and they showed in the arthroscopically treated group that a T1 higher than 320 before surgery was correlated with better outcome. But there is no uh, applicable T1 cut-off at this moment. So in conclusion, almost uniform T1 index decrees after joint preserving surgery despite clearly clinical improvement of the patients. And the, in this group, in the operative group, the pre-op level, the height of the T1 index correlated with a good result 